Hi guys, in this quick video I'm going to show you what is hopefully a useful tip, uh, not a tutorial as such, it's just something I found out as I was playing with the, um, the Ender 3 that I've just gotten. Um, I'm new to all this but obviously I'm learning bits and pieces as I go and having just recently gotten a nozzle clog which I narrowed down to thinking it was an assembly problem. I actually narrowed it down to a fault caused by myself in that I'd remove the PTFE tube. This is the, the heat block and the nozzle and the stainless tube that uh, sits under the, the heat sink which sits on top of this. And, uh, and then the Bowden tube connector goes in the top and the PTFE tube pushes into it down through this tube and butts up against the nozzle at the bottom. Now on removing the tube to check the clip and, and make sure that it was working and doing what it should do, I had actually not tightened, not pushed it down back in far enough. So I've got some uh, PLA stuck down in this tube here and I had a big chunk of PLA stuck in the nozzle and a cold pull didn't work for me. And it's possible that the cold pull didn't work because of that specific problem. Um, but I did find it tricky. It seems, there seems to be a very narrow window where the filament is sort of pliable enough to pull and stretch, which is where you want it for a cold pull to work. And uh, where and then where it goes too solid that it's brittle and it just the, the filament just snaps off the lump that's stuck in the nozzle. But maybe that's just me in practice. But anyway, by the by, I uh, after trying a few different things, including a drill bit, which I wasn't happy with, thinking it might go into the soft brass drilling too far. I did get a bit of the PLA out. I thought if I can heat it and use something that's softer than the nozzle to collect the PLA onto. That would do the trick and this is what I ended up doing. I'm just going to scoot in and show you. So right here we've got the nozzle and the heat block and now essentially what I did was I got a, a handful of toothpicks or cocktail sticks and these are dirt dirt cheap so the great thing about these is you can use them um, each end and then bin them afterwards because they're so cheap. And I clamped the nozzle in a pair of pliers like so so that I could hold that obviously without without burning myself and then I heated this up using a blowtorch. Now a little turbo flame lighter like the little blowtorch lighters would do the same job because you're only heating a small area. I just happen to have um, a blowtorch handy like so so I use that and essentially what you do is you heat it and then stick your toothpick in, rotate it around let it cool a little bit and then pull it out and you'll notice it pulls out lumps of filament onto the onto the toothpick or the cocktail stick and then turn it around do the same discard that get yourself a fresh cocktail stick and just keep doing this and eventually it will pull out all of the filament and I've managed to completely clear this entire nozzle using uh, specifically using that method so I was, I was quite pleased with that and and, uh, I thought that this might be a tip that might help some of you others and obviously being wooden it's not going to do any damage internally to the nozzle unlike a hardened steel drill bit for example. So what I'm going to do now before I reassemble this is do the same with this stainless tube and because I'd inserted it wrong I've got some PLA inside this stainless tube here. So I'm going to heat this up and do the same thing with the toothpicks until I've cleared all that out so that I can then reassemble this. I'll need a little bit of thread lock on this. I noticed after taking it out, it's very stiff to take out and I noticed after taking it out that uh, it, it's, uh, you'll see it's quite loose there now and it, you, it had thread lock on so I need to put a dab of thread lock on there before I put it back in and fit it in so that I've got a little bit of wiggle room. It had been fitted from the factory so that the nozzle buttered all the way right up to the heat block like so. But what I'm going to do just to make sure I've got good contact is, uh, is set it up in such a way that there's a little bit of a gap between the nozzle and the heat block so that when I knit that up tightly I know that that's buttered right up to the tube and I'm, I can make sure that I push my um, PTFE tube right the way down and it's butting up with the nozzle and hopefully that should prevent um, future clogs of the same type. 
Uh, little tip, although I don't know how useful it will be in this case because this is something that gets hot, but um, if you don't have any thread lock laying around, uh, I, I, it's the kind of thing I do because I do, I do mechanical things as you know if you've watched my channel, uh, but if you don't have any thread lock laying around, a, a little dab of super glue will act as a sort of thread lock. It's, uh, it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing at all. And as I say, the only thing I'm not sure about is, is how it will affect it with regards to the heat because heat can actually break the bond of super glue. So, so you have to, have to be aware of that, but obviously you'd be able to see the heat sink rotating if it does come loose. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, take this out. I'm gonna scoot back out just so you can kind of see what's, what's going on. And I'm going to unclog this using the same method. As you can see with the blowtorch, you don't need to have it in the flame very long at all. So as I say, one of those little jet, jet burner cigarette lighters would likely work every bit as well. But there you go, that's now absolutely, completely clear of filament. We'll just turn that off. And the only important thing to remember now is once you've cleared it, don't go, oh, look at that, that's nice, and then grab a hold of it, wait until it cools down. So, um, as with anything potentially dangerous like naked flames and the like, take great care and take the appropriate safety precautions. But hopefully this will be of use to some of you 3D printing guys. So, thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.